Hi, Paul, and hi, everyone. Welcome to a new edition of PNG Tips. I'm Gary in Stockholm. Hi, everybody. Hi, Gary. I'm Paul in Barnsley. And this week, our topic is getting unstuck as a creative and specifically as a picture book creator or um, children's book creator. So, Paul, you have a, a, a lineup of different things a based on a presentation that you know, workshop that you've given at some of the conferences and, um, and at the picture book retreat. We'd love to just hear your thinking behind this. Yeah, I think we've been looking forward to doing this for a while, haven't we, Gary? Because we've both Definitely. experienced various versions of getting stuck or a creative block. So we've got different episodes. And we've already covered characters in <coughs> episode five. If you have problems with characters, then we've done some really good tips and techniques on how to explore and get deeper into your characters. Personally, I don't get stuck very often on ideas. I seem to have plenty of good ideas, but that is another good subject. Uh, for a topic because getting good idea is a fun thing to explore so we'll do that in a future episode as well yeah so this one is about it's more for illustrators it's how I got stuck and overcame what I thought was a creative block so I'm going to share some screens <coughs> and we can look at some of the screens I've prepared and you can ask me some questions about it so just to remind you yeah. if you need any tips on characters We've got a whole episode about that in episode five. <clears throat> so when I get stuck um, trying to get artwork down on paper, I always turn to inspiration and try and educate myself. And we both know these books well, don't we? We've mentioned them before. So writing yeah. pictures is great for illustrators, um, especially just starting out maybe from college. Perfect for learning the craft. Writing picture books, Anne Whitford, Paul, as an illustrator, I found this invaluable to help me with my writing. So if you feel like of... you need some inspiration or you're kind of getting stuck, start reading, start loading up with information. And there are lots so, of good exercises in there too, which is really nice. There are, we've done some of those uh, and we plan to do some in future as well. There's some excellent ones on rhyming because I don't write in rhyme. And a lot of people who we've talked to at Picture Book Retreat have problems with rhyme. And I always refer them to the section in Anne Whitford Paul's book about writing with rhyme. Um, I started reading lots of other books as well, not just picture books. And the seven basic plots I found really handy. So I created this slide because the seven basic plots, seven basic stories that we know about in any movie, any fiction, any novel, um, they can all fit one of these categories. And picture books do too. It can be quite That's cool. interesting. Sorry, go on. that's interesting, Paul, because I, I have um, I've heard of these plots and these story, different story types, but I haven't read that book. So um, it's it would be interesting to hear a little bit more about that. And the, some of them are quite obvious when you see them, like overcoming the monster and the Gruffalo. You think, oh, yeah, that, that's quite simple. But then yeah. Beowulf going to classic myths follows that trend as well. So it, it's good. It just it feels like you're in the profession of writing. If you're getting stuck, then you can start doing other things, but it still helps all to be a professional illustrator or read about the life and the work of other illustrators. I like Shirley Hughes's work, so I've got this book, but there's tons and tons of online uh, web pages, uh, blogs, and a lot of illustrators are really generous with the work that they share. And... Um, I've never been totally confident with light and colour. And we've mentioned this before about like the colour scripting in Pixar, how it's mm -hmm. fascinating. You've got that book, haven't you? The, the Pixar colour scripting book. Yeah, it's amazing that, you know, they can just, um, you know, the whole book is just filled with these colour scripts and you realise the impact that something like that has. Um, and also you really realise the uh, length that these motion pictures specifically go to to really work with the uh, storytelling on every level. Yeah, it's not just the narrative, it's not just the imagery, it's not just the music, it's not just the pacing, but the colour that flows through a story that helps tell that story. So I did a short course on this Domestica uh, website. There's lots of others, and I'm going to come back and mention this again later. And get out and visit places. I went to the Royal Dahl Museum, been to Seven Stories, 
and just immerse yourself in other I suppose in a way it's daunting because you think well I'm feeling stuck and all these people in the books and the museums and the galleries they're doing it and this is you're looking at success but it helps rub off on yourself and then I'm going to give you some tips and techniques of how to crack being stuck as I said really generous especially um, this picture book den some of our Scooby members are on this picture book den and Minnie Gray belongs to it and look how generous she is with her work they're almost like mini books in the themselves when she posts something really informative and helpful so you could spend hours and hours just reading through how other people do it and then books for keeps i highly recommend it used to be a paid for subscription now it's completely free so have a look for booksforkeeps.com you can subscribe to the digital version of the magazine there's always interviews with writers and illustrators in the middle of the book of the magazine so I was stuck because in the past and I've probably mentioned this before I've done a lot of commercial work I've done greetings cards and this was a very very early version of my bug belly story and this is the artwork I came up with it's a countdown book and it's colorful and pretty but it's not what I wanted and I could tell it's just not what I wanted on the page I like the work of Benji Davis, Jim Field, Chris Horton, uh, John Classen, Johnny Doodle. I don't want to copy them, but I want something more from me that feels like me. So I was totally frustrated with this. And it got so bad, so desperate, that I just couldn't put pen to paper because I knew I was going to turn out images like this. And so it like, paralyzed me and I was frozen. And it got, I got so desperate that I used to leave a sketchbook open in the kitchen next to the kettle in the bedroom, on the drawers, in my studio. And if I was making a cup of coffee, I'd open the sketchbook and do a few drawings, knowing that there's no harm in that, nothing's going to be precious, it's not finished artwork. And every time I went past the sketchbook, I would stop and do a few uh, minutes drawing. And it's the drawing, 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 that is the first stages that unlocked this creative paralysis for me. So I started reading about it because obviously I'm not unique. Everyone, I think, suffers some kind of creative block. Get out of your comfort zone was one of the first things I read about. Stop mm. thinking that you're doing the finished piece. Stop thinking that you're doing the one piece. You need to explore. So getting out of your comfort zone, and again, we've talked about this uh, in doing different exercises, it frees you from that habit of your usual routine. And... The main thing, I think, right in the middle, that white line, it silences your inner critic because your inner critic never shuts up. It's always on your shoulder thinking that this is not going to be good enough. This is not going to turn out right. So do some exercises that get you out of that comfort zone. And as an illustrator, it's drawing, drawing, drawing. Now, you can set up a still life. I mean, that looks pretty boring. But stop thinking that you're working on the finished piece and just do some drawing, get out into the garden set up a still life if you've got two hands draw your other hand draw a foot hands are particularly notoriously difficult do some sketches of hands get sat in front of a mirror do some self-portrait people have said try drawing with your other hand if you're right-handed like i am i drew with my left hand and i was surprised at the results i thought they'd be really poor but they weren't half bad hmm. I and course, an, an obvious one is that there's so many references now on, you know, on the internet that you, you can, um, you can use the internet as a source of inspiration for uh, things to draw too. So, mm. you know, it's like fantastic. Yeah. And people do set up challenges with that. They'll set up a reference and then challenge people to draw it within a, a week or a day or whatever. And then schemes like this project, Inktober. Uh, this is our friend John Shelley, Scooby member. He's busy, professional illustrator, but he knows how valuable it is to take time out to take part in this. And this is a drawing per day. Each one of those little, you can see how tiny they are because of his pen nib. They're done every day throughout a month. So John comes out with 30, if it's in September or October. Um, he comes out with 30 little pictures. And I think you can see... Uh, I was going to say that's one thing that's really important and uh, helpful is that um, if you're stuck, it can help a lot to draw small so you can get through a lot of compositional things um, and everything quite quickly. 
Yes, I think that could give you confidence that you think, yeah, I've actually produced something. And if you're wanting to work out a different style, like I was trying to work out what was my style, you can explore. You don't have to do every piece in the same style. You can do a different style every day. Mm. Going back to Mini Grey, this is Mini Grey's version of that. Look at the wonderful little illustrations. And mm. again, I must emphasize, she's a busy illustrator. She'll have lots of deadlines for books and other events, but she, again, knows the value of taking this time out to help develop a craft. There's another Inktober one. And then to go back to the domestic course, the, uh, the woman that led that course said that she took one of these uh, on one of these projects. So she liked motorcycles. So she drew a motorcycle every day. At the top there, you can see the fairly ordinary, although detailed, pictures of motorcycles. But look how she developed over that month. One picture per day. But look at those at the bottom, how she's kind of just enjoyed doing what she's doing. Maybe got more spontaneous, added characters, added colour, added dynamism. So just to go back, that's what I was doing. And I was totally frustrated by it. So I stopped trying to work and I went out with my sketchbook and I did lots and lots of drawing. Tried to get out of my comfort zone, forgot about doing work. And I was sat in a pub one day, having a drink, got my sketchbook out to start looking around to see what I could draw. And I thought, oh, actually, what would Bug Belly my character drink? He'd be drinking um, a slug and slime smoothie. So in my sketch, this is slightly tidied up from my sketchbook, but I drew like a double page spread. And then I thought, oh yeah, as well as that, I could develop it into something like this. That's the original sketch on the left. That's a slightly tidied up one on the right. And in that hour in the pub, I filled 12 pages in my sketchbook and I could tell like the dam had burst. I'd had that rest. I'd done those exercises of drawing. And then somehow it was me coming out into that sketchbook pages. And mm. I, felt, I felt that this was me. That was my voice. So then I went on to finish a few other spreads. This was a, a picture book about Bug Billy that didn't get published, but it led on to the early reader that I did. Mm. So that's what I ended up with. So I will stop sharing there. So the, the big takeaway from this, I think, is when I look back, it wasn't like a mile high wall that I'd hit, the creative block, but it's only with retrospect that you can look back and think, no, it was a bump in the road. And just like we're going on a bear hunt, if you can't go around it, you can't go through it, you've got to go over it. But it's not an impassable wall. It's a bump in the road. And when you look at the long creative process, there are lots of those bumps and you've got to go over them. It's part of the creative process to get there. And it's only looking back in retrospect, you think that is, yeah, expected. And the other important thing is recognise it. So in future, I knew, because I always suffer from that, getting mm. down on paper what I want. But I recognise when you get to that stage and think, I'm frustrated, yeah. I'm at that stage again, where I know that there's a way ahead and you just need to use some of these techniques to get around it. So helpful. So helpful. Um, especially that kind of insistence on, you know, continuing to draw and draw and draw. And even if it's not the thing that you're doing specifically, if it's a still life or whatever, to just keep that process going and then eventually things are happening inside. Right. And then it all kind of can burst open. Um, and we can also often get a little bit um, disillusioned or not feel like we can proceed. But if we keep going in any direction, it's going to lead us towards what we're going for because we know that we still have this kind of focus towards this, uh, you know, this creation that we're aiming for. That's right. And as I said, I'm not unique. We've heard lots of illustrators talking at conference at Picture Book Retreat. They suffer from the same thing. They'll take them off, sell off for a yeah. walk, get outside. Or they'll go and do drawings or paintings, and as well as working small to rapidly produce something. I've heard that they also work big just to free up your mind and, like I say, get out of your comfort zone. So that's one set of tips for becoming unstuck. Um, it's super helpful. And I know you've got future ones, and we're going to come back to this and do a, different episodes on this. 
Yeah, definitely. I have one um, based on this idea of like uh, micro steps. Um, it's one of the things when I do other kinds of um, presentation and talks about kind of making micro habits or micro steps um, it can help in the process. So we can talk about that maybe next time or another time. Um, uh, and then I, I was thinking um, another one that might be useful for all of us is that to get unstuck like a kid gets unstuck, you know. Um, a lot of times, especially as adults, we feel like we have to do it. But when you see uh, kids, we, they're playing with each other a lot. Um, and we tend to drop the idea of like collaboration or uh, playing together or working together. And yet, um, as individual like siloed creatives, but if you actually work in an agency, of course, you're often doing brainstorming sessions and things like that. And we as creatives kind of uh, sometimes forget that, I think, uh, so we can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, we de I definitely feel like a hermit sometimes just working here yeah. in the studio. Mm. It is fun because we, we know that we've, we've done this kind of playing when we get to Picture Book Retreat, and it's so much fun. Yeah. And mm -hmm. times like this, when you and I meet on, on Zoom, we do maybe do a few exercises uh, and we can mention them in future. So, right. Yeah. That's maybe it. For Perfect. This. Yeah. So thanks, everyone. And uh, look forward to our next uh, PNG tips. Yep. See you, Paul. See you again. Bye.